On today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the IBM ThinkPad 380XD, a mid-range laptop sold between 1997 and 1999. Uh, this particular model has 32 meg of RAM soldered on board, upgradable to 160, a 4 gig hard drive, and a 233 MHz Pentium 2 processor with MMX technology. Uh, let's get into this and uh, see what we can do. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. If you're like me and you like messing around with these old computers and just seeing what they can do, or just watching me do it, please consider subscribing. Now, the first thing I'm going to have to do with this thing is get it clean. It's got quite a bit of crud on it from the years. I don't know the last time it's actually been cleaned, uh, but I'm going to do it today. So, a little microfiber towel here, a little bit of 409. Uh, isopropyl alcohol works too, but if you have the little... Uh, this doesn't have it here, but there's all there's some of the soft rubber uh, that kind of gets a little harsh. Uh, 409 is pretty good, a microfiber towel, and just give it a good cleaning here. And see what comes off. Now, I did take the battery out of this thing. Uh, I mentioned in the last video when I uh, shown this off real quick that the battery is making a hissing noise and uh, that's not something you want to be messing with especially with uh, you know 28 year old lithium batteries or however old that thing was I don't know the last time it could have been replaced but you definitely don't want to be messing with old lithium now one thing I noticed on the bottom here is it says used equipment. So I'm wondering if this thing was bought refurbished. I don't really know the full history of it. Now another thing you want to do is you never want to spray directly onto the computer when you're cleaning it. You want to spray onto your rag and then let it soak in a little bit and then scrub. Uh, that way you're not getting any... Ooh, a lot, a lot, of, came off, a lot of stuff came off with that one. So this way, if you're cleaning like that, none of the actual liquid is going into the laptop. You don't want any excess moisture in here than you need. Now this is a little tacky. That's a downside of this cleaning is that any rubber surfaces might just become a little more tacky than you want them to be. Enough dry time on there, enough uh, finger grease, it'll be back to normal. Now, one of the mo more disgusting things I noticed on this laptop was the keyboard. Uh, it's definitely had somebody eating a lot of lunches in the past over this thing. <laughs> Lost the rubber nub. That's fine, I got more. Okay, that's about as clean as that little section is going to get there. Let's do the screen a little bit here. Trying to keep this on camera as much as possible. And there you go. Uh, a lot of the black came from the rubberized uh, side of things. I do have the little nub here and it's just kind of dry rotted and gummy. I've cleaned these things before and when you clean them really good, they just turn into bubble gum. So I am not gonna do that. I'm just gonna see if I got a replacement and go from there. Uh, they do sell them on Amazon still, so it's not the end of the world if you lose it too. All right, so I got this little baggie that came with the laptop here and a whole bunch of nubs. So I don't see any red ones. Uh, here's a little brand new green one. Brand new, it's probably just as old as the laptop. Uh, but yeah, now we have green because why not? In fact, no. There's some blue ones in here, and I'd prefer to go with IBM Blue. So there's that. Pop that little guy off, and we'll go with this. There we go, that's a little bit better. Now that it's all cleaned up, let's get some software on here. Now, I do have the original boot disk that I downloaded off of archive.org and the restoration CD 
uh, as well. Uh, this is going to load Windows 95 on there and it'll be the stock image that would have come right out of the box. So this is a little bit of uh, PC archaeology here, it's just seeing how things used to work. So we're going to go ahead and get this turned on. If I can blindly find the button, there it is. Now the first thing it's going to tell me is that the clock is bad. Uh, the CMOS battery needs to be replaced. Uh, that's pretty obvious for a computer this age. So there's the errors, 161, 163. So that's telling me that the CMOS battery is bad. Let's go ahead and just hit enter on that. That's not very important. It's going to get lost as soon as I unplug the thing anyways. Uh, I do plan on repairing that. Uh, well, I say repair because it's you'd think it would be as easy as swapping out the battery. No, because when I went to pull out the battery, the little connector lifted right off the pads. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have to go ahead and fix that as well in the future. Pretty easy. It didn't damage the pads, luckily. Just an annoyance. So this is loading the CD-ROM driver so that the installation CD can boot. Uh, back then, it wasn't as easy as just putting a disk in and having it boot on its own. Now I'm going to choose one for English. Now it's telling me that it's going to erase everything on the drive. Perfectly fine with that. So I'm going to hit two for continue. And I'm going to choose three for factory default. And that's going to just wipe everything. Now what it did here is it took the 4 gig hard drive and the default format is it's going to split it in half. So you've got a 2 gig primary partition, your C drive, and then you're going to have like a 1.8 gig uh, secondary partition which will be your D drive. Uh, for whatever reason that's how IBM saw uh, the best way to partition your hard drive back then. Now. I don't really prefer that. Uh, when I load other software on here, I'm just going to blow that out and uh, you know figure something else out. Uh, I do plan on putting something like uh, OS2 on here, uh, perhaps Rhapsody uh, as I tinker with it more. Uh, but for now, I just want to get the initial uh, stock feel. So this is going to take about another 10-15 minutes. So I'm just going to jump cut to that, and you'll see it fully formatted. All right, and I am back. So while I was gone, I made a cup of coffee. Uh, this has finished formatting, and we are now at the initial stage where it's asking what language you want to install. Uh, if you're wondering what coffee I'm drinking, it's 22 Sierra. Uh, it's veteran owned. It's not a advertiser. I wish I was that famous, but uh, I really like their coffee. It's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and choose English. Obviously, there's a license agreement you have to agree to, so I'm going to say yes. It's asking if you're using an internal CD-ROM or an external PCMCIA CD-ROM. Uh, I am using the internal one, so I'm going to go ahead and hit next on that. So now it's doing the full recovery from the CD-ROM. Now, this in itself is going to take uh, another 10-15 minutes probably, so I'm going to finish my coffee and uh, jump cut to that. Okay, that didn't take as long as I thought it would. I even still have some coffee left. So the system has been restored, and you basically just come back down here and hit end now. Now, another thing I noticed is it is kind of cute. It has a little red dot that would normally be your, your red uh, nub here. Now, it's going to go through all the normal uh, first-time setup stuff, so I'm going to blow through that quick, and we'll see how the desktop looks. All right, so here's the first boot after all the initial setup. It's going to have everything that came out of the box on this thing, so it's going to have the bloatware as well as some of the useful stuff. So it's usually best to just uh, you know go through, delete the bloatware you don't need, Keep some of the things you do want to keep on here, utilities and whatnot. Now clearly this little uh, sidebar with internet links is absolutely dead. So that's of no use to me. So let's go ahead and put the PCMCIA card in here and get us on the internet. 
Now, even though I told it where to find the file, it immediately asked me for the disk. So now I got to put in the Windows 95 disk back and forth. Now, I should have done this, I forgot to, but you can copy all the CAB files over. That's usually the easiest thing to do. Uh, I'll take care of that in a little bit. So IBM did copy all the CABs over, luckily. It's under Windows Options CABs, uh, if you had to find it. Okay, just have to do a quick reboot of the computer. Hopefully the internet is working then. Okay, after a reboot, it actually did work. It connected to the internet. Now, if I go ahead and try to open a web browser here, it's gonna give me an error that it can't connect to Microsoft's website. Obviously, uh, the certificates are way gone. And let's check out a couple websites I know will work. One website I know that will work that has a lot of useful utilities is altexa.org, altexanet.org. So this website works great. It also has a lot of good utilities, uh, a lot of stuff you can download still, and it will work with older computers and older browsers that don't have the latest security and SSL certificates. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, a lot of stuff that's very useful. Uh, there's also Frog Find, uh, 68K News. Uh, there's a lot of different websites out there that still work on our old machines, and uh, you should keep a good bookmark of all those. And you really forget how much you miss uh, touchpads and scrolling when you're subjected to just a nub. Now there's not too much you can do on this sidebar here. It's pretty useless uh, today. So let's go ahead and take a look at the properties here. And it is Microsoft Windows 95, uh, registered to me, uh, totally valid product key, uh, 32 mega RAM, it's got your IBM logo here. Click on support information, and I'm sure they'll help me if I call up tech support. Now let's, uh, let's put some games on here and just see what this thing can actually do. And I'm back with a different t-shirt. So two days ago when I recorded all of this, my camera lost the footage. So instead of using my side camera with the horrible built-in mic, uh, I figured I'd just reshoot it. So I'm, I've got the Neverhood Chronicles right here. It's a game from about the same time this laptop came out, uh, mid-90s, uh, give or take. So I'm gonna load that in here. It's already installed. Uh, not that there's too much to install, but you do need the disc to play because most of the gameplay is basically uh, stop-motion animation playing off the disc. So you insert the disc and you get this little start screen here. I'm just gonna resume a previous game so we're not going through the whole intro of everything. DreamWorks Interactive. So this isn't a very graphic intensive game. Uh, like I said, most everything is just video files being played off of the CD-ROM. So what it does do is it does check your CD-ROM to make sure it's fast enough to play. So if you had just like a single or double speed CD-ROM, this would be very unplayable. Now there's not really any options here for graphics. I can't get rid of the little margins around the screen here as far as I can tell. Uh, there might be an option like if I go into a configuration file and do some editing maybe, but this is fine the way it is. Now I don't know if you can hear it, but the CD-ROM is spinning up. And this is where I left it last. It's a point and click game, uh, a lot of different puzzles that you gotta solve. Uh, it's pretty immersive for what it is uh, for a game of this age. So you'd go through here, there's a little puzzle to solve. Let's see what happens if I pick up that giant stick of dynamite. Apparently nothing. Maybe I gotta click on this guy hanging off the ceiling here. 
Nothing there either. Walking through the room it is. So every scene here, every time you click on something, it just basically plays a video file. And uh, it was kind of like the original Mist, how that was just still images that you'd page through. Uh, this is a little bit better than that because it is animated video. Uh, they filmed this entire thing on stop motion. So you don't need a real massive GPU to play it, which is very convenient. Uh, but you do need a decent enough computer just to play the video files and read it off the CD-ROM. Uh, where this one it does seem to work properly. So I'm going to go ahead and quit the game here. And just remove the CD-ROM so I don't have to like, pop a paper clip out later when I try to put it back away. And uh, that was pretty basic gameplay with this. Uh, this would probably do half decent with like the original Command & Conquer maybe. Stuff like that. I wouldn't try to play Half-Life on this thing. Uh, it might handle it, but I don't think it would handle it very well. So aside from playing basic video games on this thing, uh, it does have some practical uses if you did want to use a vintage computer for today's workload. Uh, you would be able to use it for basic word processing, spreadsheets. Uh, it does come pre-installed with Lotus Suite. Uh, so there is that if you want to type up some documents. It has Lotus Word Pro 97. So if I were just to type up a little basic document here, hello world, and if I wanted to save that, would I be able to save it in something that is readable with today's word processors? So yes, you can. Uh, it does have a word for Windows 1.0 through 95. So any of those should work. So it does have the .doc file format that you can save in. So it's telling me that features might be lost. So that is something when you're saving in a cross-platform uh, file format that will happen. But if you wanted just basic text that you're typing up uh, memoirs or, you know, whatever you need to type up, you do have that option. Uh, so it's not completely useless in, in modern times. Uh, now, that being said, if you did want to just, you know, bring a modern laptop to Starbucks so you could use the Wi-Fi, uh, you can always do that. But if you want something that keeps you off the internet, no distractions, and just works as a typewriter, this will do it for you too. So I hope you like this video. Like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Uh, Reach out to me. Let me know if you have anything you want me to cover. Uh, thank you for watching. Take care.